Okay, welcome to the latest uh, session of the Tea Time with God and Adult Christian Education Ministry of the Wences of United Church of Christ. Uh, as always, if I welcome my uh, the, um, uh, the replay viewers especially, uh, you make up the vast majority of the class. And I must say, I'm really impressed because, uh, because of all of you uh, stopping in uh, for the replay. This is actually the highest attendance yet of any of the adult Christian education classes at the Wences. So, uh, so to keep on watching it there, and we'll uh, keep on uh, having at the very least a dual uh, in person and uh, online uh, with replay uh, format in the future. Uh, and uh, and about, and and as always, if you have any questions or comments. Either leave them in the YouTube comments or uh, email me at j o g r e b e at gmail.com. And, uh, and now let's uh, start the latest set session, which is on contem contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer is a very powerful type of prayer when it comes to growing closer to God. Unfortunately, contemplative prayer is not widely practiced or known about in the church, and at worst is misunderstood and even feared in some circles of the church. I was first introduced to contemplative prayer of, um, uh, when I started working with the spiritual a, a director very young during a dry period of my spiritual life after seminary. Barry was a retired professor from the School of Spirituality the train spiritual directors, and I continued to meet with him for the rest of his life. Barry emphasized uh, that, well, it may feel like that I needed to or the reconnect with God, that it was not a process of reconnecting with God, uh, but needing to learn how to draw upon what is already within you, as the Bible teaches that Christ abides within us. Barry's specialty as a spiritual director was teaching contemplative prayer, which he had personally found in his experience to be the most beneficial type of prayer for spiritual growth. This started me upon the less taken path of contemplative prayer and the deeper mystic tradition within Christianity. Barry was right uh, that, uh, that what I ne needed the most spiritually was a more intimate a relationship with God, something that could not be found within the scriptures, but only in the silence of contemplative prayer, something that went much deeper than I could think myself through, despite my level of theological knowledge and understanding, as the Bible can only take you so far in the direction of God's love as it is not the truth and the light, but only the doorway that leads to them. As contemplative prayer is what enables one to go deeper, not, in, not only into oneself, but more importantly, deeper into God. Barry urged me to go to the place of letting go, to become better at letting go, to ask God to help me and, give me the freedom to let go, as the more we let go, the happier we are, as letting go makes us better instruments for Christ. In the most basic sense, contemplative prayer can be described as silent prayer or a type of Christian meditation. Contempl contemplative prayer is ultimately a prayer of letting go, and going beyond the limitations of emotion and language to rest in the presence of God. This can be viewed as making room for God in ourselves, as even when we are still physically, our minds are really open and available, as we are almost always continually distracted by random thoughts, even during times of prayer and worship. Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God, um, is the Bible verse that is most associated 
with contemplative prayer. The Hebrew word for be still, rafa, means to slacken in the sense of to loosen a tightened pulled rope or wound up spring. The verb is in the hipper stem, uh, which is used of uh, to note it being used in the figurative sense of be still, to let go, relax, and be quiet. This is similar to language used today to describe the practice of a meditation. This is the same verse uh, that as the source of the modern saying of let go and let God as a sign of faith and trust in God to take care of things. Isaiah 30, 15, you will be saved and returning and rest. Your strength will be in quietness and confidence is another Bible verse associated with contemplative prayer. The most important thing to keep in mind with contemplative prayer is that when properly used, it is a supplement to other types of prayer and worship and are not to be seen as a replacement for Bible reading, other types of prayer, worship, and receiving Holy Communion. It was for this reason that initially there was much resistance and uneasiness about teaching contemplative prayer to the non-monastics apart from Lexio Divano, given that Lexio Divana leads one through the movements of deep meditation on the scriptures before we get in into a period of contemplative prayer. In fact, the Cloud of Undoing, an anonymous medieval text on contemplative prayer and the main source for modern contempt center in prayer begins with an exhortation that only people of a mature and active prayer life in the church should be permitted uh, to read the book. And so while contemplative prayer can be a powerful spiritual practice, please, for the sake of your mental and spiritual health, do not make it the entirety of your spiritual practice. Center in Prayer is a contemporary repackaging of a Christian contemplative prayer developed in the 1970s under three Trappist monks, Father William Menzinger, Father Basil Pennington, and Father Thomas Keaton. The story goes that the monks at their monastery were increasingly encountering lost people trying to find a nearby Buddhist retreat center. Upon talking with them, they were surprised uh, to learn that most of them were Christian backgrounds, uh, but were drawn to Buddhist meditation retreats for contemplative experience, which they found lacking in the church, while being fully unaware that Christianity had its own rich contemplative of the tradition. Upon realizing that the Christian uh, tradition of contemplative prayer had basically become lost outside of monastic communities, uh, they set to work uh, the great center in prayer as a modern method of teaching contemplative prayer um, the, to, to the people that were not, in, not involved in the novice process of uh, becoming a monk or nun. While well, center in prayer draws heavily upon the cloud of a known, they also drew from a wide range of, of texts from the Christian contemplative of the tradition, ranging from the Desert Fathers, Lectio Divina, and, and, and the writing of Saint of the Teresa of Ave and of Saint John of the Cross. It could even be likened as an updated edition of the cloud of a known, as well it was a, a the medieval text, it was written by a teacher of the long established contem Christian contemplative prayer to the tradition who were the rich to, who were the rich to uh, remain anonymous. Thus, center in prayer is simply a more modern and simplified repackaging of the ancient Christian contemplative tradition to make it easier to understand and apply to one's spiritual life. When most people hear about meditation today, 
they think of transcendental um, meditation, which differs from center and prayer. Center and prayer makes use of a sacred word, which is not the same thing as a mantra. A mantra is a sound, word, or short phrase, which is repeated over and over throughout the entire time of meditation, such as the commonly known um of transcendental meditation. A sacred word differs as it is only used when necessary and one is encouraged to let go of the sacred word when it is not actively needed. The sacred word serves as a symbol of your intention to let go and your consent to God's presence working in you. Still, it is helpful to choose a sacred word which has some significance to you. A good sacred word is a short word of, of the word or two that are ideally one or two syllables in Latin. Common, commonly used sacred words include God, Jesus, love, peace, faith, let go, father, or Abba. Many teachers suggest starting with Jesus as your initial sacred word. Personally, in my experience, uh, I find two syllable sacred words to be best as it allows one to match it with your breathing. For example, Jesus becomes G on the in inhale and us on the exhale. Another suggestion that I have is if you know another language, to choose your sacred word in that language. The main advantage to having a non-English sacred word is that it allows you to set it apart as something special that you are not likely to encounter apart from your time in center and prayer. It is for these reasons that I use shalom as my two-syllable sacred word. While most people know that this is often translated as peace, the Hebrew has a much broader meaning, which also implies safety, wholeness, well, welfare, contentment, and, and tr tranquility. Unlike transcendental meditation that urges one to clear your mind, center and prayer operates under the belief that it is impossible not to think. Thus, trying to resist thoughts is not helpful. Instead, center and prayer teaches that when you notice yourself engaged in thought, to let go without judgment and gently return to your sacred word. Ultimately, center in prayer is a prayer of intention and the desire to let go of everything and quietly sit in the presence of God without any agenda. It is impossible to fail when it comes to center in prayer. If you find yourself getting distracted 10 times every minute, it is merely 10 opportunities to let go into God and return to your sacred word every minute. Thus, the only way to fail at center in prayer is to give up trying, as the more one practices center in prayer, the more one learns how to better let go. Letting go is a valuable skill to possess when it comes to the spiritual life. This is because one of the main struggles of the spiritual life is getting distracted by desiring some things too much to the neglect of uh, more important things. Sin is often wrongly oversimplified as desiring bad things instead of the good things of God. However, the truth is that we are smart enough to only desire good things and not bad things. For example, theft is wrong, but Thebes will only steal good things worth stealing and not worthless garbage. Thus, the ability to mentally detach yourself from counterproductive thoughts when you find them, find yourself in them, is a valuable fruit obtained from a developed center in prayer practice. To practice center in prayer, it is best to find a quiet place where you will not likely 
be disturbed that has a comfortable chair. While sitting on the chair, it is, is the suggested posture for center and prayer. If you are well practiced in yoga and able to uh, comfortably sit on the floor or on a mat or the meditation cushion, feel free to do so if it feels more natural to you. If you have a medical condition uh, that, uh, that prevents you from uh, sitting still comfortably, uh, then lying on your back uh, could also work, uh, but you will be at increased risk of uh, falling asleep. Assuming you are sitting on a chair, sit with your feet on the floor and place your hands in a, on your lap or beside you on the chair in whatever posture feels natural to you. Finally, unless you are using your phone as a timer, it is best to silent your phone so that you are not disturbed. Let go of the need to be immediately reachable. If it is truly important, the caller will leave a message or call back later. And any incoming emails or text messages will still be there when you are finished with your time of prayer and, and ready to move on with your day. When it comes to center and prayer, most teachers suggest that it is best but to begin with a short prayer, asking for God's guidance and protection before entering a period of contemplative prayer. Not so much because contemplative prayer is dangerous, but to openly set our intention before God to help keep ourselves on track. One may then wish to briefly reflect upon Psalm 4610 as we desire to simply be still and know that I am God. As center and prayer involves resting in our longing and desire of the former of God in our lives as we seek, seek to move to the center of our deepest self. While it is difficult to describe without experience in it, common images used to describe center and prayer is, is to imagine yourself slowly descending a spiral staircase or going down into a deep pool of water. This image of letting go and going deeper into ourselves and God beyond the scope of words uh, that words kind of describe is a beautiful way of viewing the intention behind one sacred word. Continue going of, um, deeper into God and mentally repeating your sacred word until it naturally drifts away as you become more centered. If at any time you find yourself distracted by a thought, let go and return to your sacred word until you can once again let go of it. Keep on doing this throughout your time of center and prayer. When the time is up, uh, spend a minute or so to calmly rest and reflect before going on with your day. A standard recommendation for a center and prayer practice is two 20 minute sessions a day, which over time may be increased to 30 minutes. Although there was a good chance that, that you will likely need to work up to 20 minute sessions. If you find 20 minutes to be too overwhelming at first. Start with 10, 10 or even five minutes before the work in your way up to 15 and then 20 minutes. Likewise, if you find two sessions a day uh, that should be of the too much at first, stick with one and move up only when you feel ready for more. And without a doubt, center and prayer has a learning curve. To, due to its more unique nature. While, while I was learning, Barry told me that at first it will feel like nothing is happening during your times of prayer and that you're just wasting time. However, he urged me to keep at it and remember that the true fruits of center in prayer are not to be found in the times of prayer, but outside. Well, the goal of center and prayer is to deepen your relationship with God. One of the first fruits 
of center and prayer that I experienced was in was an increased ability to focus as I got better at letting go. In my experience, Barry was right when he told me that I was searching for something that could only be found within the discipline of contemplative prayer. As, I, as now, I can also reaffirm Barry's remark as letting center and as learning center and prayer was also a game changer in my spiritual life as well. The breath prayer is another form of center and prayer. Unlike center and prayer, the breath prayer makes use of one's breath as the focus of one's awareness. Center on one's awareness upon the breath is an almost universal practice among numerous cultures and faith, faith traditions, and even appears in modern secular relaxation exercises. So it's natural for many of us to question how sitting still, paying attention to our breathing can be an act of prayer. While the breath may be universal, there is deep biblical significance behind the simple breath of humanity. Therefore, with a proper mindset and understanding, following one's breathing can become a powerful act of becoming aware of God's presence and ever and an ever-present reminder of our relationship with God. The significance of the breath of humanity goes back to the creation accounts in Genesis. Uh, we need to um, keep in mind that regardless of what one believes when it comes to the origins of the universe, that it will always be a matter of faith. The current scientific uh, theory of the Big Bang does not even try to account for how or why it happened or the source, the matter and energy that makes up the universe. In Genesis, there were two different creation accounts, um, which discourages us from taking the final details too literally. Yet both accounts share common deeper spiritual truths of behind the creation accounts from an ancient pre-scientific society. The first is that God is identified as the creator or source of all things in the universe. The second is the unique role of humanity in the creation of the word. The first creation account says that humanity is created in the image of God as both male and female. The second account said says that God breathed into man the breath of God and man became a living being. The Hebrew word for breath in Genesis 2, nasham, which is used for both breath and spirit. So it can also be said that God placed the spirit of God within humanity as the source of our life. This is what the mystics also refer to as the God seed, which, which refers to the part of the divine that is within us as part of being created in the image of God. This is also why the gospel message places an emphasis upon the resurrection of the body and the promise of eternal life in Christ, given that it is the very breath of God within us that is the source of life, um, with us in our body. Thus, there can be no human life apart from a body. According to Genesis, humanity is set apart from the rest of creation by being created in the image of God with the spirit of God within us and the unique role of Cain for the rest of creation on the behalf of God. In fact, we bear the very name of God within us. In Hebrew, Yahweh is the personal name of God. In the Jewish faith, this name is traditionally not pronounced out of a sign of reverence for the name of God, so they substitute the name of Adonai, which means Lord. The Jewish tradition is followed in most English Bible translations, 
which translates the name of God as the Lord in all capital letters. There was no universal agreement on how to uh, the, uh, the pronounce the, so the letters yod hey they hey given that yave is always written without the vowel points in the Hebrew Bible. The most commonly used transli transliteration used by scholars today is yave which has been which has replaced Jehovah as the most likely uh, pronunciation. It is also interesting uh, to note that Yave sounds like the sound of breathing, as pointed out by both Jewish and Christian mystics and scholars. In fact, some will say that the only proper way to, to say the name of the God is to say it uh, the, uh, with your breath, to say yeah, on the inhale and on the exhale. Pause for, for a moment and breathe deeply other than thinking Yave, and you should find it uh, uh, within your breath. This ties to Psalm 50 or 156, which says, let everything that breathes praise the Lord or hallelujah, which is Hebrew for praise Yave. It is impossible for us to breathe without uttering the very name of God in our every breath. So just sit quietly and focus on following on your breath as a way of centering ourselves upon the presence of God that is always within us. So before I forget, I'll share the handout link in the chat. Also, just so you know that the handout link actually includes a uh, um, link to a online guided center and prayer uh, session actually recorded by uh, the, uh, by the Maria Golio, my uh, spiritual uh, the director I actually uh, found our first uh, online through our resources before I finally started to the work with her as a replacement to uh, Barry after he passed away. That's awesome that you have that link there. I'm anxious to take a look at that. Well, I guess it's a 30 minute audio file, just so you know. Okay. And she assumes the 20 minutes of uh, it. She has, she pretty much has a brief uh, introduction to lead you into the time of a center in prayer, assuming that one has zero experience, 20 minutes of silence, followed by, uh, uh, which is broken 20 minutes later with uh, some gentle music before she leaves uh, with a, a contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer or own of the creation to help gently lead you out of the period of center and prayer gently. Mm -hmm. That was a good reminder of um, practicing breath prayer um, and, and that focus that I had kind of, you know, forgotten about. Um, and refocusing a little bit on the idea of letting go, I think is, is good too. There's, there's, um, so much that comes in and so much we feel we need to do and want to do. And, um, you know, that sometimes putting some real thought into what we can let go is, is helpful too. And just really giving ourselves over um, to God a little bit. And, you know, um, I think that is something that is a challenge for me um, 
but a good thing to remember the uh, let go and let God. I wrote that down. Uh, and that can be a good thing for me to keep in mind. You know, try to focus on that this week. Yeah, also if the more of a mention there, especially in the introduction there with the areas of process there with that one, that, that, that thing there with the long series of letting go or the key to the growth. I should probably mention there that he passed away uh, before Disney's Frozen came out. <laughs> Otherwise, knowing the type of uh, person he was and his sense of humor, he probably <laughs> would have taken that as a, as a challenge to the re to, to the rewrite the Let It Go song into a contemplative teaching version. Right. <laughs> I'm sure when you hear the song, you think of him, right? <laughs> no, very good questions to think about. Um, yeah, I definitely struggle with that. Letting go of things. I like, so also maybe as a quick thing there, so just read the two uh, suggested exercises for the week to come in the handout so that you, okay, the first thing is over the next week, I consider giving center and prayer a try or run in your prayer life by aiming for at least one time of center and prayer a day. After the time of center and prayer, pause to reflect how you feel uh, before I uh, return into your day. After a week, reflect upon center and prayer, and if you think it think it would be a helpful addition to your spiritual life or not, then it's just a quick of a note about if you if you like guiding and the link to the session, and then for the breath prayer, would be on the lookout for the small pockets of time of the during during the day to practice breath prayer. Of the good times to consider is that they're not only downtime uh, when doing things like brewing tea, uh, but also taking a short break the, for, for a minute or so if you feel yourself uh, the, becoming overwhelmed. Apart from it being in the middle of, of driving or them operating heavy machinery at the time, there was nothing wrong, wrong with pausing other than for, for a minute to, 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 to focus entirely on your breath and the mystery of how each breath you breathe is uttering the very name of God as the evidence of you, you being created in the image of God and God dwelling within you. Very nice message, John. Thank you. Okay. And any other questions or comments? I also realized that that to both of you were the present that present one around maybe a a year and a half ago, I gave a contemplative prayer uh, talk at Wentz's when we were between pastors mm -hmm. Sunday morning. You know, it's such a good reminder, um, even, you know, to hear it again and, and things that I heard you say this time that I don't even remember hearing last time. So I think that's true. You know, anytime we listen to something again or reread it, um, you know, we catch different things based on where we are in our life at that moment or where we had distractions, like when I had to run and let the dog out uh, in the middle of your talk this time. So, um, so yeah, I, I appreciate hearing it again. It's, it's fine. So um, I don't have any other uh, questions for tonight, but I feel like I have some homework to kind of work on and think about this week. And I will look forward to seeing both of you again next week. Okay. okay.